What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we're talking about our top five baits for the month of March. March bass fishing, springtime bass fishing. This is the time of the year where a lot of fish are caught. Not only a lot of fish, but big fish. Now is your opportunity to catch the biggest fish of the entire year. As these fish prepare for the most part in most parts of the country for pre-spawn, getting into spawn, these fish are gonna be bulking up. Yes, I know Florida and Texas, those, those southern states are probably already through several cycles or stages of the spawn, but for the most part, March, it's go time. So uh, for me, this time of the year, it's all about reaction. It's all about covering water. I'm looking for those active fish. I'm looking for those fish that are trying to bulk up, trying to get heavy to do their, do their thing, right? Do the spawn. So for me, it's all about reaction moving baits. So for me, number one, it's going to be some kind of bladed jig, some kind of chatterbait. Now, I just did a video uh, a week or two ago talking about the importance of throwing red this time of the year. So remember that when you're looking at some of these baits, but uh, set that aside, we're talking chatterbaits. I love throwing a bladed jig. Now, now it might be on grass lines, it might be uh, around or over the tops of flooded uh, timber. A lot of times in March, a lot of times in early spring, we get those early spring storms, which brings warm rain increases or heightens your water levels and a lot of your fisheries. So you get kind of murky, murky water, right? So I like to have a couple different colors. Typically, I got my shads and my bluegill colors, my green pumpkins, and then I have some kind of craw, you know, some kind of, of uh, either jackhammer or that new Z-Man, that Elite. That's another, uh, an awesome, awesome bladed jig, but some kind of orange or red color, either fire craw or lava craw with a flame. I mean, just some kind of bright colors, but a jackhammer, a chatterbait, an Elite Evo, some kind of bladed jig is my number one bait this time of the year because I can cast, I can, you know, with a jig like this, I can throw it 30, 40, 50 yards. I can cover an entire, you know, area in one cast. And a lot of times this time of the year, as those fish are moving up shallow, especially in the afternoon when you get those warmer afternoons, those fish pull up shallow to those flats. They're thinking about spawning, they're thinking about feeding up. So if I can take a chatterbait, and just cover that flat. I can cover a lot of water and I can cover it fairly quickly and find where those fish are staging up, find for those active fish. So for me, number one bait is gonna be some kind of bladed jig, okay? Electric shad, some kind of green pumpkin shad, some kind of orange or, you know, craw pattern are my go-tos. Number two, uh, for me, I've probably caught, I've caught probably more, I, I, let's talk, no, let's talk lipless cranks. I was trying to think if I wanted to go swim baits or lipless cranks because both of those categories are my bread and butter uh, this time of the year. Multiple double digits on both categories, uh, but a lipless crank is not as nearly as in depth as the swim bait. So maybe I'll say the swim bait for a little bit later, but a lipless crank, either that LV500, that, uh, that TN70, right? That Swimtrex Max, you guys know that we really love that new guy right there. Uh, you know, a lipless crank, just like the, the chatter bait, these fish are staging up, right? So I can throw that thing out there. And now for me, it's really important to understand that as a trap fisherman, as a, a, a lipless crankbait fisherman, this technique, this is not the chuck and wine for me right now. This is going to be the slow down the hop. I get more big bites doing that, but if you're a guy that's fishing a you know vast flats, maybe you're on Gunnersville or Tennessee River, something like that, and you might need to throw a, uh, a trap where you're just, you know, ticking the tops of the grass and ripping it and, and just burning it, right? But that's a completely different technique with the lipless crank. So I'll, I'll down below, I'll link some of those, uh, some of my favorites for that 
style of lipless crank. But for me today, we're talking the, the uh, TN70, TN60. You know, that's a heavy bait, smaller profile, heavy bait. And the, for me, that is key. You're, you're talking a half ounce, five eighths, three quarter ounce bait, but a fairly small profile. And all three of these, the LV500, the TN70, and that Swim Trex Max. Uh, different sounds. I have, I have several of each of these baits. Uh, different sounds, but again, that smaller profile is key because you get that reaction strike. As you're, you're fluttering this thing up and you let it fall, having that heavier bait crash down to the bottom, you go to hop it, let it crash down, doom, you will get some of the hardest, most aggressive jig bites your entire life throwing a lipless crankbait uh, in the month of March like that. Again, I'm going with the reds, the craw patterns, and then I'm going with the bait fish patterns, okay? Fairly, fairly simple, but a lipless crank, again, is another bait that I can pick apart those key areas, and it's just a different movement, and those aggressive fish cannot stand that rattle bait. Rattle, 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 fall. Rattle, 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 fall. It's just a really obnoxious, loud bait, and uh, giants eat it. Okay, so now let's talk about, we'll hold off still. I'm, I'm getting anxious with the with the swim bait. So let's talk square bill. Since we're same in, and still sticking in that same situation, you're covering water, you know, where I'm throwing that lipless crank, you know, I'm once I figure out where those fish are transitioning to, or the area that they're using to make that transition, that spring transition. Maybe it's a break off of a point. Maybe it's a grass line out off an edge. That's where I'm doing that, that, that hopping technique, right? But if we're up on that flat, say we're up there with that chatterbait, uh, another great bait for me this time of the year is some kind of square bill. Now you can get super aggressive with this, right? Burn, 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 pause. Burn, 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 you hit something, pause. Having these baits basically, I'm not gonna say weedless, but fairly weedless, having that big square bill on the front deflecting off of that cover, right? Lay downs, dock pilings, submerged wood, uh, even off of grass, right? Being able to move this thing quickly a square bill is easily in my top five, okay? Got that got that, uh, that biggie by River to Sea in that cold blooded color. This has produced so many big ones for us throughout the years. It's kind of that ghosty red. Like I said earlier, talked about those red baits in a previous video. Red during the spring is a must. It does not replace all of your shad and bluegill bait fish colors, but make sure that you at least have it with you tied on in the boat in the backpack you know on your kayak wh wherever you're fishing make sure you have a version of red uh, depending on your water clarity that's when you're going to go with more of the ghosty colors uh, versus the really loud vibrant colors you know something that's uh, muddy or um, or clear water that's totally going to determine the different colors that you're using but a square bill is a must this time of the year. You get up on that flat, you can cover a ton, a ton of water. Again, when you deflect, add that pause, add that real twitch, boom, those fish are gonna eat. So a square bill, the biggie, the atlas, I'll link some of my favorites down below in the video description, but some kind of square bill has to be in the top five this time of the year. Sticking with that, let's talk jerk baits. Now jerk bait is probably something you've been throwing all winter long baits all over the place all winter long for me got baits and hooks for me in the winter time those cold water months i'm throwing that mega bass that uh that 110 division 110 the junior 110 uh 110 junior plus one i should say but that's more of my cold water jerk bait really finessey ultra realistic suspends awesome in the water however as we get in through you know start this transition through spring the month of march you're getting the warmer weather you're getting the warmer water temps typically they're jumping up into the high 40s low 50s these fish are getting aggressive that's when it kind of opens the playbook for me 
for some more aggressive jerk baits either the world minnow with the flash boost from shimano see that right there as this bait is suspending it has that secondary action with that flutter in there see that guys or the jackal the rearrange again more of an aggressive still a fairly natural good looking bait just a more aggressive bait i can move this faster my cadence is a lot faster i'm not doing those long pauses as that water warms up i'm just i'm rip 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 pause rip rip pause rip 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 pause i'm not doing those long exaggerated pauses and that uh oh i got a bent hook on that guy on that world minnow and that re-range are two awesome, awesome jerk baits. Now with that said, since I'm speeding up my cadence, since I'm fishing it fast, faster, I can get away with throwing a lot bolder colors. You know, your clowns, you know, more of your white baits, uh, chartreuse, uh, you can get away with some more aggressive colors because you're fishing it faster. So just like that square bill, just like the chatterbait, you can go with some of your more obnoxious, loud colors and they just eat it, especially when you start getting into that dingy or muddy water. These guys really, really work. All right, now let's talk about swim baits because for me, with that lipless, it's produced a lot of giants for Matt and I, uh, the swim bait as well, right? That's kind of what we cut our teeth on. Big fish out west, the swim baits. Um, springtime, those big females are staging up. So some of the best spots in, in your fishery are going to be loaded with big ones. They're going to be transitioning, right? They're going to be moving up along those main lake points to those secondary points, backs of those spawning bays. But each of those areas are key locations for big ones. And in my opinion, there's no better bait, single bait to catch or try to catch to target a big, big female largemouth than some kind of swim bait. Now, there are a lot of swim baits on the market, a lot of good swim baits. Uh, this time of the year is when I make my change from a wedge style swim bait to more of a, a boot style so be a lot more aggressive again with those water temps just like with everything you're getting more aggressive you want a more aggressive kick so you're getting away from the the savage gears or the huddle stins and you, you can still throw them especially if you're on a trout fishery but that's when i really like throwing the mag draft okay it's a uh, an easy bait to throw it's basically got one speed once you get that speed the thing has a ton of body roll head roll and an awesome kick caught so many big ones on this guy right here as we get into the warmer months back off a little bit in the colder months we're going with that huddle sim we're going with that savage gear and that still applies this time of the year it depends on your your water temps but uh, some kind of big swim bait now with that said there are a lot of good swim baits that are in the eight inch size and the six inch size. For me, because I'm looking for that big bite, I go with that bigger swim bait. So I challenge you guys to do the same, you know, don't be afraid to throw an eight inch swim bait. A two pound, a one and a half pound largemouth will eat this. A 10 pound largemouth, a 12 pound largemouth will eat this. So you have a lot bigger, a lot better opportunity, a lot better chance of sticking that fish of a lifetime with that bigger swim bait it has more drawing power and it just kind of it just gets bit by bigger fish okay so if it's coming down to that six inch uh mag draft versus eight inch they're both great baits they both have their own purpose but this time of the year i'm going with that bigger bigger profile okay also swim baits the glide bait okay this is another opportunity to catch the biggest fish in your lake. Now, the glide bait, the soft swim bait, one, two punch, they're both swim baits, just completely different actions, completely different swims. This is your chuck and wind. This is something that you can get aggressive with. This is actually the bait, uh, bait sanity. That is uh, an awesome, awesome glide bait. Obviously, the S waiver, the 168, the 200, readily available, uh, great fish catching glide baits. This guy down here, got one more for you, stuck in the car carpet, that Spro Chad Shad, okay? 
awesome, awesome baits. Lots of big fish have been caught on these baits, but with the, the glide bait versus the single, you know, the, the soft bodied swim bait, you can't do much with this. This you can get real aggressive. So you cast it out there, real, 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 five or six handle turns, twitch, twitch, and that bait goes side to side. A lot of times, this time of the year, make sure you're wearing your good polarized sunglasses. You throw that bait up across that secondary point, that last point going into a spawning bay. You throw it out there, you reeling it, you see that black sub, that big dark mark following your glide bait. Real, real, real twitch, twitch, and that thing just comes unglued. You can get a lot more uh, reactive, a lot more response out of the glide bait versus the big boot tail swim bait. So it's uh, two completely different baits, but this time of the year, the month of March, all the way through spring, I have one, I have both tied on. I have one big glide and one big soft swim bait tied on because if I'm just chucking and winding, that, that, that mag draft is a great chuck and wind bait. If I'm getting around key pieces of cover, that's when I can go with these glide baits because when I come up to that, that high percentage area, maybe it's the only dock on a point or, or whatever it may be, when I get to that high percentage area, that's when I can add that real twitch, that rod twitch, and get that bait to move side to side and really trigger those fish to eat. Where something like this, they just wanna eat it, they have to want to eat it. That glide bait, you can trigger them. All right. Last but not least, that was five. I'm going to throw in a six for you because this bait still plays a ton for me this time of the year. Some kind of a rig, Alabama rig. Okay. Specifically, this is the rigs. These are two rigs we designed this is, uh, with Hog Farmer. This is the tactical. That's the mini flex. And this is the micro flex. Uh, lighter wire, a lot more action. Again, it's a great chuck and wind bait, but I wanted to hold these two up for you. So size comparison. This is the mini, okay? This is a, a, a rig that's designed for your 3.8 size Kitex up to your 4.3. Right here, we have the mayor on there. That's that uh, Crush City. That's that new swim bait. It's awesome, awesome swim bait. Uh, the Swammer is another amazing, amazing uh, soft swim bait for the A-Rig for us. A lot wider kick than the Kitek. So um, those are awesome, awesome baits for the A-Rig. But what I wanted to show you, this is the mini rig. This is the micro rig. Considerably smaller than micro rig. This is a true 2.8 size swim bait. I have the Armor Shads by Namiki on there. That's an awesome swim bait on there. But look at the size comparison, comparison in, in this night and day difference. So there's been some questions, comments about, you know, which one's smaller. That micro rig is tiny compared to the mini rig. So again, we have the flex rig out. We have three sizes. That's your 4.3 to 4.8 sized A rig. Then we have the mini and then we have the micro. But an Alabama rig, it doesn't get better. Uh, there isn't a better bait out there mimicking a school of bait fish. And as these fish are up shallow feeding or they're out deep off of a point feeding, they're on those shad balls, an A-Rig is an awesome way to take advantage of those aggressive fish. So again, I will link my favorite baits and colors down below in the video description. <clears throat> Swim baits, that Kitek, the Swammer is a must. You know, we've, we started throwing that a year or two ago and... As that water warms, hands down, that is uh, a highly producing bait. I'm not gonna say a better bait, but for us, it's a different bait. Everybody in the world's throwing a Kitek. If you want a bait that has a different action, a lot more roll to it, uh, that Swammer's a, an awesome, awesome bait. And then that new one, the Mayor from uh, Crush City, that is another really good swim bait for the A-Rigs. I will link all this stuff down below in the video description for you favorite colors, favorite baits, but guys, the month of March is a fantastic time to be out on the water and chasing big bass. You know, for me, it's all about reaction. Sure, you can slow down and throw a drop shot or a shaky head or a jig, but for me, it's finding those active fish. It's covering water, throwing that big swim bait, 
throwing that glide bait, the chatter bait, the lipless, the jerk bait, the square bill, and having fun. Chucking and winding, getting lots of bites, big bites. The month of March, you guys should be out there fishing, and hopefully this video gives you, uh, points you in the right direction for the baits that you should be focusing on. Guys, as always, we appreciate the support. Thank you for watching. I'll link everything down below in the video description. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.